Coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. DRL selects Pittsburgh, Massachusetts as site for the 2017 Alliance World Championships. FAA publishes first set of UAS facility maps. And Aurora, Colorado passes on enacting drone legislation. Hi, I'm Bree Cross. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 195,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. Fitchburg, Massachusetts was selected by the Drone Racing League as the official New England site of one of its six 2017 Alliance World Championship races that culminate in a winner-take-all World Championship event. Quote, it's very exciting that Fitchburg was selected by DRL to host their 2017 Drone Racing Series, said Mayor Stephen Denali. We looked around aggressively for a community to host our New England race site, said Ashley Elson, Director of Operations for DRL. Fitchburg was the ideal location and the Johnny Appleseed Trail Association, the North Central Massachusetts Chamber, and the City of Fitchburg were all amazing in support of our efforts. The Fitchburg race was conducted April 13th and was not open to the public. It was one of six races to test piloting skill and the limits of FPV flight. The races will begin airing on premier broadcast channels including ESPN, ESPN2, Sky Sports Mix, and Seven Sports in more than 75 countries in June 2017. DRL's first season reached millions of fans around the world, including more than 30 million broadcast viewers and more than 43 million views of its digital content. You're watching the AMA Journal Report on Aero TV. We'll be back with more in a moment. Hi, I'm Brian Wynn, President and CEO of AUVSI, inviting you to witness the evolution of unmanned technologies at AUVSI's Exponential 2017 on May 8th through the 11th in Dallas, Texas. Exponential is the premier trade event dedicated to drones and robotics. See more than 650 manufacturers and solution providers in the largest exhibit hall this industry has to offer. Join us for more than 200 hours of sessions on key topics and issues such as commercial unmanned applications, public policy and legislation, beyond visual line of sight operations, counter UAS systems, data management, women and diversity in robotics, and much, much more. Welcome back. In the next Drone Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. The reintroduction of the GoPro Karma drone helped boost the company's first quarter, but it still reported a loss of about 44 cents per share. GoPro reported revenues of $218.6 million for the first quarter of 2017. That's up from $183.5 million in the first quarter of last year. The Prince George's County, Maryland Police Department Homeland Security Division has arrested a suspect after he was caught flying a drone in restricted airspace in the area of the Five Alarm Fire in College Park recently. The 24-year-old suspect was charged with interfering with police and fire response, along with reckless endangerment. Detectives will consult the FAA for consideration of additional charges. A crowdfunding campaign being used by Coup Drone to solicit backing for a new camera drone does not provide an accurate representation of the aircraft's capabilities, according to one drone blog. The blog, Droning On, reports that Coup Drone has raised over $1.2 million from north of 9,700 customers on Indiegogo, but the videos posted on the site from the company's YouTube channel does not provide any examples of in-flight footage captured from the small camera drone. The Hangar 360 app allows operators to create and share interactive 360-degree photos for mobile or desktop. Hangar 360 autonomously flies your DJI drone, captures the required images, allows for one-touch upload to Hangar's cloud for processing, and delivers a fully stitched 360-degree image. Hangar 360 is compatible with the DJI Phantom 3 Series, Phantom 4, Phantom 4 Pro, Inspire, Inspire 2, and Mavic, 
and it's completely free. That was our Drone Minute, now back to the rest of the news. The FAA has published more than 200 facility maps to streamline the commercial drone authorization process. The maps depict areas and altitudes near airports where UAS may operate safely. But drone operators still need FAA authorization to fly in those areas. The maps will help drone operators improve the quality of their Part 107 airspace authorization requests and help the FAA process the requests more quickly. The maps are informational and do not give people permission to fly drones. Remote pilots must still submit an online airspace authorization application. Requests to operate in these areas will require further coordination and FAA safety analysis. Remote pilots can refer to the maps to tailor their requests to align with the locations and altitudes when they complete airspace authorization applications. The FAA personnel will use the maps to process Part 107 airspace authorization requests. Altitudes that exceed those depicted on the maps require additional safety analysis and coordination. Additional maps will be published every 56 days through the end of the year. Questions may be directed to the FAA's UAS Integration Office via email at uashelp at faa.gov or by calling 844-FLY-MY-UA. Maybe this will be the start of a new trend. The Aurora, Colorado City Council has decided that it does not need to enact its own drone regulations. Instead, the town will follow the federal aviation regulations. That's a new concept. The council determined last month that there was just no need for city-specific drone regulations, unlike other misguided Colorado cities. The city of Aurora owns a DJI Mavic drone for use by their police department and senior assistant city attorney Nancy Rogers said there are many uses for such aircraft, including building and water tower inspections and emergency operations. Aurora Police Division Chief Jim Pushkin said that there are three licensed drone pilots on the force and that the department requires more training than the FAA does. The city has also used contract drones and aircraft owned by volunteers at least four times in the last few years, including mapping a murder scene and a search and rescue mission located a missing boy earlier this year. The APD is considering more sophisticated drones for police work, but meanwhile, hobbyist pilots who meet FAA requirements appear to have a safe haven in Aurora, Colorado. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday through Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net and more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. We'll see you next week.